Alrighty, and here we go. It's time for the most exciting unit that we'll probably do the entire year. And that is talking about the United States and Canada's physical geography. Okay, maybe not. But the good point is, is that as soon as we're done with some of this, that we'll be able to go right back out into the class and actually do some good stuff with it and maybe have a little bit of fun with some of the stuff that we just learned. Alright, so here we go. Here's what you guys are going to need for today's flip. You're going to need a simple sheet of paper and something to write with. So what you're going to do is, every time that something is in red, you're going to write that idea down, and then whatever description you want based on what I've said or what I've written down. That means that you will need to be pressing pause often. Okay? So here goes. Here's the first test. One of the first things we talked about were the five themes of geography. Notice everything that is written in red. So what you'll do is you'll write five themes down. You'll write location, you'll write place, region, etc. And then you will write down a little bit of what it says with it. Now this is by far the slide that has the most information on it, but it's kind of a review for us, okay? So what I want you to do is, I want you to write down this in red, I want you to write down the little bit of a description, and I want you to press pause to do this. Ready? Press pause now. Okay, now you're pressing play, and here we go. All right, so if you're written down location, place, region, movement, HEI, now it's time to get going. So let's go, uh, go on to the actual physical characteristics here. Now, remember, physical is anything that nature creates, right? So here we go. The landscape for both the United States as well as Canada looks, all the physical characteristics are very similar, such as, if you look over in the western portion of Canada, as well as the western portion of the United States, there is a higher elevation, plateaus, maybe drier areas. If you look in the central portion, it's a lot of plains, hence the term Great Plains that goes right down the middle. And then if you look over by the coastal areas, really low level elevation and a lot of coastal climates. All right. However, there is a one great difference between the United States and Canada and and it comes in the fact of climate. Now climate can be forced uh, can be influenced by multiple things. The number one that we have that's listed on this map uh, that's shown on this map is latitude. Now remember we talked about latitude. Latitude is, an is one of the two pieces that we use on the grid, latitude and longitude, to form absolute location. Remember that's one of your first uh, themes that you just wrote down. Uh, other climate factors. Wind, ocean currents coming off the Pacific as well as over on the Atlantic. Those come together, uh, bring in warmer and cooler waters at different times of the year, and then rainfall patterns. Okay, Now, going down the middle of uh, the country, uh, and I say the middle of the country meaning the high point of the country, of the United States and then the high point of Canada is a thing called the, a divide. All right. There are several divides throughout the United States and Canada. There is one really big one, and we're going to talk about that one here in just a second. But really quick, what is a divide? A divide is simply that high point or a ridge that determines the direction that a river flows. Okay. Now, the continental divide is the big red one that's on this map right here. All right. This is the one that goes all the way down. That means any water that goes off on the left-hand side will end up going out into the Pacific Ocean. Any water that goes off into the right of this map or eastern part of the map will end up going into either the Arctic Ocean, Hudson Bay, or down into the Gulf and the Atlantic Ocean. Notice there's a couple of other divides where water goes down, but that, all of that water still ends up going out essentially out into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay? Now, this, uh, this ridge that goes right down the middle of the Continental Divide uh, is going right down the middle of the Rocky Mountain uh, Range, starting all the way up here in, Can uh, in Canada and Alaska, and going all the way down. And it actually, there's a ridge that keeps on going down into in South America, but we will talk about that when we talk about, um, when we talk about Latin America. All right? Now, this goes into the river flow. Now, the river flows, as we just said, 
either in, if it goes to the west, it goes to the Pacific. If it goes to the east, it goes simply to the Atlantic. But there's other bodies of water that feed into the Atlantic, such as Hudson Bay, the Arctic Ocean, and uh, um, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, for instance. Okay, So the river flow is kind of important. This gets us into those rivers. Now, the waterways are, uh, we always say that they're the key to civilization. Every town, major town, every major city, every major civilization always claims that they're near water because water is kind of the essence of life and the essence of, of, uh, of uh, being and survival and all those other uh, factors. So rivers and lakes and coastal waterways, all those things, these are all shown right on this map right here. The main one that we're noticing right here is the Mississippi River that goes up all the way to this point right here. This is Ohio River, Missouri River. We'll talk about those here uh, in just a second. Now, where do those rivers start? You see the lady on the left, which is just kind of hilarious, um, standing right at the headwater of a major river. This is, uh, and then over to the right is the major river. The source of the river always starts off very small. Uh, it can end up being very massive. And that's one of the things that uh, is, is kind of important, is a lot of these rivers start off small, they just get massive by the end of it. So what are those rivers called? Well, they're called tributaries. Tributaries are those smaller rivers or streams that feed into bigger ones, and then they get bigger, and then they feed into bigger ones, and then they get bigger, and they feed into bigger ones. And so what we have starting off here is uh, the Mississippi River we know is the big river, right? Well, it actually is fed into by a whole bunch of other tributaries. And in fact, the Missouri River technically would have been the major river and the Mississippi feeds into it as a tributary, but it's called uh, the Missouri uh, Mississippi River System. And the Ohio River, for instance, is a major tributary into the Mississippi River. Okay, so that's that's that. Now, one last thing that we're going to talk about before we're, before we get wrapped up here is because of all of these different climates and because of the different physical features that go into uh, the design of of the each of the of the North American continent. We have a lot of different weather patterns that come in. And these are some of the things that we're very familiar with. There's nothing in red here to write down. This is more just of an introduction slide. But this is something that we're, we're used to seeing. Rain, rainbows, and a possible tornado in the background. Uh, this is something that here in the Midwest and throughout uh, the plains and into uh, um, even on down through the south uh, lately, a lot of these uh, weather patterns kind of uh, come up. So here, here's what we have in North America. Spring and summer, there's it's tornado season. Uh, summer and fall, hurricane season. Uh, and then we end up getting these blizzards in the winter. And that's one of the things that, uh, that we are familiar with are, are, are those blizzards. Um, it kind of starts from this prairie. And this prairie coming off of the Rocky Mountains and going across, this is where all of these wind patterns and weather patterns and everything start to develop, right? And as they sweep across the prairie, which is that grassland area, end up maybe developing into something like a supercell. Now, these supercells are where we end up getting these really violent thunderstorms. And this is where things like tornadoes come from, okay? Now, also, that's just in warm weather where cold fronts, warm fronts meet together and all that. Here's another one that ha happens uh, here in the Midwest along these very same lines when you have uh, moisture uh, meeting uh, different weather patterns are blizzards, okay? Snow ends up developing, and you look out on these, and then they, these blizzards just kind of sprint across the plains and go out further, further, out, east, uh, further out east following these, uh, these weather patterns and the westerly winds, winds coming from the west. And this is something that you might have seen or might have been a part of, or one of these uh, really violent snowstorms where you can't really see very much and temperatures are Below, well below freezing. Now, one that, the last one is one that we're not very familiar with, but it still affects both sides of the North American continent, and that is a hurricane. Hurricanes are fueled by warm water, and then that warm water comes right into uh, up to up through our coast, and they have these really violent, you know, turning uh, uh, cycles of of weather patterns of clouds and storms. And you see uh, the diagram right here over what uh, what a hurricane really can look like. But these are these large, powerful windstorms uh, that form over warm ocean waters and bring those warm waters in a little bit closer to uh, the North American continent. Uh, they cause a lot of damage, just like tornadoes. But again, it's a weather pattern that if you live in those areas, you're very used to. 
So right there, that's the end of it. But what I want you to do is, if you need to go back and get any information, go ahead and press pause uh, and, uh, and replay anything that you need. Good job, guys.